Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a month end query that will show all months for a sales report in Microsoft Access, even if that month has no sales. Normally, when you do an aggregate query to join and sum up records by month, for example, if that month doesn't exist, it doesn't show up in the query. So I'm going to show you how to get around that. Today's question comes from Zul, one of my YouTube subscribers, a silver member. Zul says, I just finished watching your year-end sales report video that shows how to make an aggregate query to total sales by month. I have some months that don't have any sales at all, and the query doesn't show them. How can I show all of the months and just put a zero where there are no sales? This is a very good question, and I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. First, for the rest of you, if you have not yet watched the year-end sales video, go watch it now. Otherwise, you might not know what I'm doing. So go watch it. Go pause the video and go watch it right now. And while you're at it, go watch these other videos on aggregate queries and outer joins. All right, they'll be very helpful for what I'm about to do. So go ahead. Go on. Go watch it right now. They're all free. Go. What are you waiting for? Okay, so here I am in the Tech Help Free template. You can grab a copy of this from my website, and if you watch the other videos, you know exactly where and how to get it. I'll put a link down below. Now, in my ordered table, I've got three orders in here. I got two from January and one from March of 2021. In order to make a query showing the totals, I have to join that together with the order detail queue. The order detail queue has my extended price in it for each line. This is what we did in the other video, right? Let's go and create that again right here. Create, query design. I'm going to take, let's turn off the property sheet. I'm going to take the tables, take the order T, and I'm going to bring in the order detail Q. Okay, there we go. Now, if I bring in the order date and let's say the extended price, I can then turn this into an aggregate query by turning totals on over here, right? Group by order date. And then let's sum up the extended price. And if I run this, you can see there we go. Okay. Yeah, this one from March I don't think has a, a value in there. Let's go, uh, let's save this. Let's call this my orders by month queue. And let's go put some more data in here. Let's put a couple more orders in the system. Let's go to uh, the order form. All right, there's one from me. There's one from Jim Kirk. Here's the one on 314. Yeah, there's no date. There's no number in here. Let's put some numbers in here. And let's put one more order in. Let's put one in. Okay, from today. That's fine. Let's do from uh, Will Riker. And he got some stuff. And 50 bucks. Okay. So now there's four orders. We're going to ignore whether they're paid or not. We're just going to run the numbers for all of them. Now, if I run my orders by month, there we go. Okay. Now, I don't want this by individual dates. Because here I got two orders on the same date. So I want this by the entire month, okay? Because if that second order was from, let's say, let's go back to my order form here, 114, let's say this one's from 115, okay? When I run that query now, I don't want two separate entries for January, all right? So let's break this down and show just year and month. How do we do that? Back into design view, let's get rid of order date. All right, let me uh, shrink this up a little bit here. So we can see everything. Slide up. There you go. Come on. Come on. There it is. Okay. Now, we're going to use the year function to get the order year. Right? Order year colon year of order date. All right? That says take the year of the order date and put it into a field called order year. And if I run it now, there you go. 2021. But I don't want all of the whole year grouped together, right? So I'm going to make another one for the month. And what are we going to call it? Guess what? Order month is going to be the month of the order date. And we'll group by that one and then we'll run it there. So you see every grouping level that we add adds another row to our query. Okay. Now I like to put the sum at the end over here. So we got the year, we got the month, and we got the extended price. Okay, nothing new so far. This was all covered in the previous video, but I wanted to get us back to this point here. Now, 
I want to make a report and I want to see every month represented here. So February, April, June, they're missing sales. I want to see a zero. Okay, how do we do that? Well, that's why I wanted you to go watch that outer joins video because what we're going to do is make another table that's simply got 12 records in it, 1 through 12 with the month names if you want them in there, okay? And we're going to outer join that to this table. So it will show a record for each of the 12 months and then a related sales record from this query. All right, so let's do that. Save changes, yes. Let's create table design. Okay, let's make a month number. Don't just call it month. Month is a reserved word, right? It's a function, month number. Now, this is one of those rare circumstances where I say it's okay to not use an auto number. Normally, I am a preacher for auto numbers. I love them. You should have them in almost every table. This is one of those exceptions. It's a small table. It's only going to have 12 records in it. It's never going to have more or less. It's always got these exact 12 records in it. I'm going to maintain this list of numbers myself. It doesn't need to be an auto number. And in case I accidentally delete one like May, I can just type it back in. So this is just going to be a number. Okay, so we're just going to come in here and put number. Okay, and in fact, I'm going to hit the primary key button right there and make that my primary key. No need for an auto number in this table. Rare circumstance, I know. Okay, so let's save this as my month T, and let's throw some data in it. All right, what are we going to put in here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That's it. That's all I got to do. What about the names and stuff? Don't worry about that. We'll do that next. We'll use functions for that. All right, save it. I know it seems silly making a table with just 12 blank entries like this, but you'll see this makes it really easy to do. There's another method that I could show you that involves programming, and that's what I'm going to do in the extended cut. But this is the simple way to do it. Okay, now let's create another query, and we're going to join together that month table with our order query that we just made. All right, orders by month queue. And we're going to join together the month number with the order month. Make that join manually. Let's bring down month number, and then let's bring down sum of extended price like that. Run it. Okay, there you go. Now, that's why I wanted you to learn about outer joins. Come back out here, change this join type to number two, show me all the records from month T and the records from orders by month where the join fields are equal. Now when you run it, look at that. All right, two, four, five, they all have blanks there because there's no matching record on the other side. That's okay. That's what we want. This is exactly what we want. And this is why I had you make a table with 12 records in it. Now, I don't want to see blanks there. I want to see the number zero. So the sum of extended price, let's call this sales, colon. Let me zoom in so you can see this better. Shift F2. We're going to say sales is going to be NZ, sum of extended price, comma, zero. That says convert null values to zero. All right, if this turns out null, put a zero there. All right, hit OK, and now run it. There's your zeros. All right. Better yet, let's format this as a currency. Now, you can right click on this and go to properties and use this guy here, format, change it to currency. I don't like that. It's, it's not reliable. I, I don't know why. It just changes. So I like to use the format function in my queries. The, the, the field property is okay in reports and forms, but some, somehow in queries, it always just gets messed up. I like the, I like the manually format, comma, currency, like that. And now run it. And there you go. There's your zeros properly formatted as a currency. Okay. All right. Now, let's display the name of the month. All right. Let's call this month, uh, month N, and we'll use the month name function of month number. Like that. And now run it. And there's your month name. So I didn't want to necessarily put those in the table. Okay. And if you only want to abbreviate these, put a true in there. The second parameter for month name is to abbreviate it or not. And there you go. See that? And let's move this over there. And run it. And there you go. Now, as the query is written right now, it's going to give us every month for every year. 
So we need to break it down a little more. Let's go into our order table, for example, right here. Let's say this one here is from July of 2021. Let's say this was from last year, 2020. Okay, and if I run the query now, you'll see it's still showing up. We don't want that. So we're going to add order year. And however you want to break it down is up to you. If you want to just use the current year, right? Let me slide this up to the beginning here, right there. If you want, and if you run it now, you'll see what I mean. Okay. If you want to use the current year, then you can just put in here equals the year of today's date like that. But be careful when you do that. Look at, you got rid of all your null values because if you look, let me cut that out. Watch this. See, there's null values in there where there's zeros. But that's okay. They're going to be zeros anyways. So put in here equals year of date or is null like that. So just put your zeros back in there. And we're going to hide this anyways because I'm assuming you're going to put it in like a report. So now you'll just see that. Okay. This is just formatting it. to. You can make it look pretty somewhere else. Put it in a report. Put it on a form. Whatever you want to do. Put the year in the top. If you want to have the user input the year, you can put it right here as a criteria. Enter year. Right, like that. Access won't know what enter year is, so when you run that, it's going to ask you for the year, 2021. There you go. See? I'll put this back to year of date. And I'll give you the current year. And now I can save this guy as my sales for current year by month queue. All right, and close it. And now I can just open it up from there. There you go. So Zool, I hope that answers your question how to do that. Now, what if you want even more detail? What if you want to see records by day instead of by month? You want to show sales by day, every day of the month. Well, it's really hard to do with the technique that I just showed you. Months are easy. Every year has 12 months. Not a big deal. But days are different. You got some with 31, some with 30, some with 29, some with 28. Okay? So it's better to use a totally different technique. So in the extended cut for the members, I'm going to show you how to do sales by day. We're going to use a record set loop, VBA programming. We're going to loop through all of the days in the selected month. You type in the year, type in the month. It will create a temporary table with each day of that month and then calculate the sales for that day and fill it into the table. And now you've got a full table with all the data that you need. And you can use that for whatever reports and forms you have to use. And then the next time you want to run it, you just do it and it creates a table again. So that's covered in the extended cut for the members. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos. And if you like the material covered in today's lesson, Check out my expert lessons on my website. I've got 32 different levels of expert classes, and they go through all the different kinds of stuff that expert users like you want in Microsoft Access, different functions and all kinds of different stuff. So check them out. How do you become a member? Click the Join button below the video. After you click the Join button, you'll see a list of all the different types of membership levels that are available. Silver members and up will get access to all of the extended cut tech help videos, live video and chat sessions, and more. Gold members get access to a download folder containing all the sample databases that I build in my Tech Help videos, plus my Code Vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus access to my full beginner courses and some of my expert courses. These are the full-length courses found on my website and not just for access. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, ASP, and lots more. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and feel free to post any comments that you have. I do read them all. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Click on the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of building databases with Access. 
It's over three hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. And if you like level one, level two is just $1. And it's also free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and you can send me your question there. Click here to watch my free access beginner level one course, more of my tech help videos, or to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching this video from AccessLearningZone.com.